material that I want to cover it is absolute values. And in particular, this sort of ties in to what we did yesterday, because I want to discuss inequalities involving absolute values. And Tomorrow, maybe, or Monday, we'll talk about why um, we're interested specifically in inequality. Is today we'll just learn how to solve them. But before we talk about solving an inequality involving an absolute value, we'd better make sure we're all on the same page about what an absolute value is. So the absolute value of a number, let's say of a number C, is written as the number C with vertical lines on either side. So like, the absolute value of two is written like that. The absolute value of negative three is written like that, and so on. And what is the absolute value? Well, for now, let's just say that taking the absolute value of a number gets rid of any negative signs. And again, we will motivate this. We'll probably, I mean, we'll review tomorrow as usual, but since we have less material to review because Monday was off, we'll probably spend 10 minutes or so tomorrow explaining the motivation behind all of this. For now, we'll just understand absolute values in this way. So two doesn't have any negative signs to begin with. The absolute value of two is two. Negative three does have a negative sign. The absolute value gets rid of it. The absolute value of negative three Three is positive three. And what we are very interested in from an applied point of view is inequalities that look like this where the absolute value of a linear expression is less than a number, or maybe less than or equal to a number. And again, we'll, well, I keep saying we'll get back to this, but I guess there's no reason we shouldn't provide a little motivation now. We are especially interested in absolute value inequalities that look like this. The absolute value of X minus B is less than K. And that's because 
on a number line, this absolute value is the distance between B and X. So this seemingly sort of abstract bunch of symbols has a very concrete meaning. It says that X is close to B, whereby close we mean that the distance between X and B is less than K. So absolute values show up in real world applications where we want to say that numbers are close to each other. And now that we have at least some kind of motivation for why we might want to look at inequalities like that, Let's learn how to solve an inequality like this. And we're specifically going to look at the case where we've got the linear expression inside the absolute value. So we're not going to look at cases where we have the absolute value of quadratics or the absolute value of complicated expressions. We're just going to look at the absolute values of linear expressions. And this is something that traditionally students struggle with, or at least some students struggle with. So, um, so pay careful attention, I guess. We cannot solve an absolute value inequality directly using any of the stuff we talked about yesterday. For example, it is, it is not okay to see this inequality and try to subtract B from both sides. If you do anything like that, you're going to get an incorrect answer. And when I say that students often struggle with this, the reason, I mean, I'll say this in front of a class that you cannot do this. There's always at least one or two optimistic souls who think, well, maybe we can after all, but no, we cannot do anything like this if what we're trying to do is solve an absolute value inequality. What we have to do instead is we have to rewrite absolute value inequality is in a very specific way. Saying that the absolute value of something is less than the K is the same as saying that this thing inside the absolute value is stuck between positive K and negative K. 
and then this is so-called compound inequality. We do solve using the techniques of yesterday, adding and multiplying by positive constants and all of that good stuff. And this probably needs an example to really clarify things. So before we go any further, let's look at an example. The absolute value of X minus two is less than seven. Let's say we're given this inequality, we're working with distances, and this shows up, and we want to solve it. Well, according to what I just said, this inequality where the absolute value of x minus two is less than seven is the same as saying that x minus two is stuck between negative seven and positive seven. And now this, we're going to solve in the same way or much the same way that we solved inequalities yesterday. Um, yesterday though, of course, we didn't have two inequalities. We had one inequality. So we could solve something like this. or we could solve something like this, but we weren't asked to solve anything like what's on the board. So we should probably start by clarifying what our goal is. Our goal is to get X by itself, in the middle of this inequality. So this negative two, we don't want. Our goal is to get rid of that. How are we going to get rid of this minus two though? Well, think back to yesterday. If we just had this, what would we do? Add two. Add two to both sides. And if we just had this, what would we do? Add two again. So both this inequality and this inequality, ooh, my putting my hand on this whiteboard has kind of, made a mess. Let's see if we can fix that there. Both those inequalities are solved by adding two. And that's precisely what we're going to do. We no longer have two sides exactly. This inequality is instead in three pieces, but we will add two to each piece of the inequality. And get negative five is less than X is less than nine. We can look at a slightly more complicated example, but does anybody have questions about what's come so far? 
then let's be a little more ambitious. Let's say we have the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is less than 9. We'll solve this absolute value inequality. And once again, you have to set these inequalities up properly. If you just Look at that and try to subtract three from both sides up here. That's not going to work. You have to write this compound in a body. So what would a good first step be here? Subtract three. Subtract three. I agree with that. We want this X by itself. So in particular, we don't want the two here and we don't want the three here. And we need to get rid of the addition first. And rather than talk about subtracting three from both sides, We'll talk about subtracting three from each piece, but the principle was very much the same. Negative 12 is less than 2x is less than six. What now? Divide each piece by two. Divide by two. And just like um, we were doing yesterday, if we divided by a negative number, it would flip the inequalities. <laughs> Dividing by a positive number does nothing of the sort. We divide <clears throat> by positive two, we get negative six is less than x is less than positive three. Questions about this example? Yes. Where did you uh, divide? Like, can you show the steps of where you divide it? Yeah, sure. Let me. So we have this. Negative 12 is less than 2x is less than 6. In order to undo this multiplication, 2 times x, we divide by 2. And just like we, if we had our regular inequality or a regular equality, we divide all the pieces by two. So that's where that negative six and that positive three came from. I've presented, I'm, I'm not interested in when an absolute value is greater than a number. That doesn't show up in enough applications to be interesting. But there is one sort of obvious question we could ask based on what we did yesterday. And that's what would happen if we had a less than or equal symbol there. And the answer is pretty much what you'd expect. All of your inequalities would turn into the or equal to version of the inequality. So for example, here, if we had a less than or equal to 
our goal would still be to get x by itself in the middle of the equation. All our work would be exactly the same. We just have those less than or equal to symbols instead of the less than symbols. And let's take this opportunity to provide a little bit of notation. Here we have all the numbers between negative five and positive nine, <clears throat> including negative five and including positive nine. Here, we have all the numbers between negative six and three, in, not including negative six and not including negative three. Ranges like this show up often enough in mathematics that they get their own notation. And this notation is kind of unfortunate. I mean, it's too late to do anything about it now. But the notation we use for these ranges like the notation we use for this is identical to the notation we use for an ordered pair, which is too bad. It's pretty awkward to use the same notation for two totally different things. Saying that A is less than x is less than b in interval notation is a comma b with open parentheses next to the a and next to the b and saying that a is less than or equal to X, is less than or equal to B, is similar, but instead of open parentheses, we have these closed brackets. So summarizing both of these things, both these pieces of notation are all the numbers between A and B. The difference is that if we have open parentheses where not including the end points. Whereas if we have closed brackets, we are including the end points. And in a lot of um, a lot of applications involving distance, it really doesn't matter whether we include the end point or not. We'll talk about that a little more tomorrow. But this is the interval from negative five to nine. And we are including that negative five. 
and we are including that nine. So we have the closed brackets. See this. Here we go. This is all the values between a negative six and three, but we're not including the negative six. We don't have a less than or equal to here. And again, we're not including the three. So much the same notation, except that we have open parentheses next to the negative six and next to the positive three. Is everyone feeling confident about this? Yes, even if you're not, you can dive in and ask me if you have questions. And while you are doing this, I'll finally be around this stuff you've given me that's just been accumulating in my office. So return it to you. We can see a paper So as I return your homework, just a quick comment. I look at all the problems. I make notes if I have any notes. If you see a check on the first page, that just means that I've entered a grade into your grade book. You should still glance through to see if I've made any comments. And you can work while I get these things out. Um, I can get one. Okay. I can get this stuff. Thank you so much. much. Uh, John? Yep. Thank you. Alexia? Evan Garrison. One more quick question for yeah. you. So this is the this is the grade book. Uh -huh. And there's a check mark for two things different than that. that okay. Yeah, it, it should have. Can I have that? Sure. Yeah. I'll enter it and get it back. Bail here? No. Take them. I think it's with yours. 
Oh, all right. This fact. Ashley. Sarah. Sam No Hayden. Is Kyle here? Uh, no, I forgot it. Just a comment. You know, I'm walking around to answer questions. So, Miles. Well, Uh, can you get your name on this?
are we going to take this school? If you, and this is sort of similar to how you do this as well, if you get rid of the two, so in this case, what I if you divided both sides by two, you'd have that absolute value is less than three halves okay. that you could proceed. Yeah, okay. Um, so for both of these, the key is to get rid of everything other than the absolute value. So um, you wouldn't you wouldn't add the two. You've got multiplication, so you'd divide and get a three halves there. But then when you have this absolute value is less than three halves, you would proceed like, like all of the other problems. So I just took Yeah, the 